Hello and welcome to our first Into the Forest podcast. I set out to do my first Into the Forest podcast on a completely different topic when I ran into one research paper after another warning me of lectins and their danger to the digestive process and the bioavailability of foods our birds consume. I simply couldn't continue with the talk I was preparing for our first podcast. I knew our first podcast had to be about something really spectacular and super educational. So I chose to abandon my first topic and decided to talk about lectins and the harm they are doing to our birds' digestive tracts. Lectins aren't something we hear our avian community talk about much, if at all, but it's time we begin exposing the truth in order that we begin feeding our birds the right foods in the right amounts. Lectins are placed in foods by nature as anti-nutrients to protect foods from predators. Yep, all foods view us and our pets as predators. No matter what kind of food it is, it's the name of the game as survival of the fittest. Lectins hide unsuspectingly in foods that would otherwise seem very healthy for our birds. But when we finally begin to look deeper into each food and the constituents those foods contain, often isolated ingredients in certain foods can wreak absolute havoc on our bird systems. Lectins are one of those naturally occurring constituents. Now maybe if we only feed one or two foods, on an occasional basis containing lectins, it wouldn't be so bad. But when we feed four, five, or six foods containing lectins on a regular and daily basis, these toxins build up in our bird systems to the point of almost no return to a healthy homostasis. Let's look at the definition of lectins in order to understand what they are and what they can do to the digestive tract. Here's just one definition. Lectins are glycoproteins of 60,000 to 100,000 molecular weights that are known for their ability to agglutinate or clump erythrocytes or red blood cells in vitro. There are over 400,000 estimated binding sites for kidney beans agglutinins on the surface of each erythrocyte. Lectins are found in most types of beans, including soybeans and peanuts. Reduced growth, diarrhea, and interference with nutrient absorption are caused by this class of toxins. Yep, that's just one definition. Most legumes, if not all, contain lectins, but legumes such as beans, peas, lentils, including peanuts and soybeans, seem to be most abundant in lectins. However, many vegetables, greens, fruits, nuts, seeds, and grains, even meat and dairy contain lectins as well, but at a lower level and sometimes a different class of lectins. Yep, lectins are hiding in all foods, but we can learn what foods contain the highest amount of lectins, how to reduce those lectins, and which foods to completely avoid feeding to our birds. Remember what I said about nature placing lectins in all foods? Here we have it, folks. Lectins, as well as many other kinds of anti-nutrients such as phytates, oxalates, and saponins are placed in all foods to deter predators from attacking, destroying, and devouring them. The most common and harmful lectins are found in nightshades including tomatoes, potatoes, and eggplant. Glutens found in wheat, rye, barley, malt, and oats. Legumes, all beans including soy and peanuts. Dairy including all milk products such as milk, cheese, cottage cheese, yogurt, and kefir. And eggs. Lectins can be reduced but not completely eliminated in seeds, nuts, and legumes by thoroughly soaking and fully sprouting. This all re also reduces the phytic acid that binds certain minerals like calcium and other dietary minerals. 
Lectins can also be reduced by cooking, but unfortunately, cooking destroys the digestive enzymes, the fatty acids we know as omegas, and most of the vitamins as well. If we really want to reduce the lectins in our bird's diets, we will completely eliminate or drastically reduce the foods highest in lectins. This is one reason why I dramatically restrict all grains and legumes in my bird's diets. Just what do lectins do to the digestive tract? Lectins bind with carbohydrates from the foods they are in, as well as other foods passing through the digestive tract, disallowing proper and total digestion. This interrupts the digestive process, harming the delicate mucosal lining of the digestive tract. Avian leaky gut begins to set in. After years and years of lectins passing through the digestive tract and degradation of the mucosal lining taking place, minuscule food particles and bacteria entering the blood system, autoimmune disorders begin to set in. Once our birds begin to experience illness and disease, we never stop to think the illnesses may have started in the digestive tract, but most likely they did by the slow tearing away of the mucosal lining, where bacteria began entering into the blood system. All of this may have been caused by overfeeding foods such as legumes, grains, wheat, barley, oats, cheeses, and other starches, all very high in lectins. What do we do now? We immediately begin to reduce the amount of foods highest in lectins. We learn how to reduce the lectins in the foods we feed that do contain lectins. And we learn how to begin helping our bird's digestive tracts heal from the damage suffered from feeding foods high in lectins. One of the best foods we can feed that is almost lectin-free is organic mango. The only part of the mango where lectins have been isolated is in the rind. So peel your bird's mango and feed the meat of the fruit. Make your bird's diet high in mango. Feeding this food is not only indigenous to your bird's natural habitat where its ancestors originated from, it's just a good all-around tropical staple food high in omega-3s, beta-carotene, the precursor to vitamin A, and the, the amino acid lysine, exotic birds require to thrive. If you're still bent on feeding a legume, mung beans contain less lectins than most other legumes, even though they still contain phytic acid, but both can be greatly reduced by soaking and sprouting. When it comes to healing our bird's digestive tract, we want to feed foods containing glycine and proline, which help to restore the mucosal lining. Again, I have to turn to mango, which is high in both of these nutrients. However, we also need to feed foods high in butyric acid, and that's where this discussion I was prepping previously before I decided to talk about lectins comes into play. I was about to talk about a certain food that contains butyric acid when I ran smack dab into all of this information regarding lectins, and I simply couldn't avoid talking about the damage that has been done for decades, albeit all well-meaning, to our beloved birds. While all of us were doing nothing more than trying to get quality plant protein into our birds, along with minerals and other nutrients, we've been feeding loads and loads of legumes containing high amounts of lectins. And yes, even though these le legumes contain short chain fatty acids that supposedly ferment in the proventriculus, the first stomach, which are supposed to provide healthy nutrition, most of that nutrition is blocked by the lectins binding those carbohydrates. No wonder so many of our birds seem to be holding a good weight, almost to the point of obesity, yet are malnourished, showing signs of illness, disease, and engage in feather destruction. The type of nutrition we have been feeding is not the right kind of nutrition for exotic birds. So, what is the right kind of nutrition for exotic birds? Using field research conducted by those scientists who actually go into the rain and arid forests and study the eating habits of exotic birds, combined with good common sense, we are finally beginning to understand that you are what you eat. 
literally. Exotic birds are no different and cannot be taken out of the forest, expected to consume a domestic diet like humans eat. Instead, we as caregivers need to go back into the forest for the good health of our birds. They thrive best on what nature intended for them, tropical foods. It is our duty and obligation to these majestic creatures to find foods like they would consume in their indigenous habitats or foods very similar to those foods. Most of us have access to mango, papaya, bananas, and even some amount of passion fruit, dragon fruit, fruit, nani, inca berries, and more. We can supplement the tender greens they may find with other tender greens we can grow as microgreens, greens such as cilantro, arugula, and dandelion greens. We need to educate ourselves as well as our fellow bird lovers regarding those lectin-containing foods that are able to be soaked and sprouted in order to reduce the anti-nutrients such as lectins and phytates. Foods such as seeds, legumes, nuts, and grains are able to be prepped in this way to help ensure the best of nutrition for our birds. When we understand what foods to avoid and what foods to feed and how to prepare and combine those foods for maximum nutrition, our birds are sure to thrive instead of barely survive. Learning how to feed our birds properly is the best preventative medicine for our birds, ensuring a long and healthy life so our birds can enjoy their lives while we are enjoying their companionship. Happy foraging! If you would like to read this transcript, you can do so at exoticbirdclub.com under Into the Forest Podcasts. Thanks for listening. Goodbye.